Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good day. Thank you for joining us for our virtual Sangha service. This week we'll be observing the customary second Sunday observance of what we call the Shotsky Memorial Service, honoring and remembering those of our community who have passed in the month of April. So I'll begin the uh, ceremony with the chanting of the Sambujo, Three Respectful Callings, followed by a statement of today's observance. And then for today, the chanting will be Junirai, the 12 adorations, praising the spirit of boundless wisdom and compassion we celebrate as Amida Buddha. And then following the ritual, I will offer today's Dharma reflection. And then following that, I'll conclude by sharing Agatha, when we see the golden sun, which would be part of this broadcast. And then conclude with some acknowledgements and announcements. So once again, welcome to our virtual Sangha of the Buddhist Church of San Francisco.
Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the April Short Ski Homeo, our monthly service when we remember and appreciate those who passed away in the month of April. These are the names of those who passed in the month of April. Namo Amidatsu, Namo Amidatsu, Namo Amidatsu, Namo Amidatsu, Namo Amidatsu, Namo Amidatsu. together for a time of quiet reflection to commemorate and remember 
the Buddhist Church of San Francisco's observance of the April monthly memorial that celebrates the rebirth in the pure land of enlightenment for those of our predecessors who are now joining us in this realm to guide us to that realm of boundless wisdom and compassion, the pure land, nirvana. So we faithfully and gratefully recite the Nembutsu, humbly joining our hands in God's show. May the scent of incense teach us the purity of our intentions. May the beauty of the flowers offered remind us of the living energy of the Dharma. May the lights of wisdom that burn brightly upon the altar transform the darkness of ignorance to enlightenment, suffering to joy, conflicts to peace, bondage to liberation, complaints to gratitude. Namo Amidas, Namo Amidas, Namo Amidas, Namo Amidas, Namo Amidas. Oh, 
together in God's show. From the collected works of Shinran, from his hymns to the Pure Land, the light of purity is without compare. When a person encounters the light, all bounds of karma they fall away. So take refuge in Amida, the ultimate shelter. Namo Amida. Namo Amida. Namo. Okay, so here we are, a month since the last Shotsuki Hoyo, and a few weeks into the mandated sheltering in place. So this, as we keep using the expression, unprecedented situation gives us opportunities as much as it may generate feelings of restriction, bondage. But the basic Buddhist insight is that we have the potential, the means of liberation, waking up, appreciating our life beyond our own self-created minds that restrict, that bind us in a place of self-centeredness. But it's beginning to occur to me that this is like an enforced retreat that we're kind of told to stay physically in place. And that feels very restricted, very limiting. But in some other perspectives, we could appreciate it as an opportunity to realize more deeply how truly free we can be, free at last, so to speak. So for today's Shotsky reflection, I'd like to offer, you know, this perspective on this idea of uh, sheltering in place. And as I use the opening poem from Shinran, who celebrates Amida as the ultimate sh shelter, the realm of light that opens up our hearts and minds to realize that we are indeed one with, supported by immeasurable life. That's the spiritual liberation. That's the ultimate refuge, shelter, that gives us an appreciation of what it has meant to have been born into human life and to hear the teachings, to hear the call of awakening. And this is what I see as a potential or opportunity of what I consider to be transforming the lemon of COVID-19 into the lemonade of awareness. So before I go into the uh, breakdown of the acronym lemonade, I just to give a sense of how I see the situation. You know, personally, it, it gives us me a sense of opportunity to do a lot of things that I might have neglected or put off. Yeah, so no excuse that I don't have any enough time. Because <laughs> here it is that we are given the time to be in place of mindfulness, to look at what kind of things that we may have been uh, distracted from doing previously need to focus on the question of what is essential, what is important, I think is the opportunity that we are experiencing. And the idea of awakening is always <clears throat> what we're always reflecting on as we listen to the teachings 
of our respective tradition. We call it the Dharma. To hear the Dharma, the truth, the reality. But I thought I'd use a couple of uh, little illustrations to help us reflect upon what, for me anyway, this idea of hearing the Dharma, becoming aware and seeing beyond the limitations of our own self-centered assumptions and perceptions of how things are supposed to be. Because we're experiencing that things don't go according to our wishes. Things aren't necessarily going to go according to what I assume they're supposed to go, how they're supposed to go, and gives us a sense of light. And to appreciate that we all have that light deep within us, that heart of wisdom, compassion, the Nembutsu, the mind of the Buddha, that is dedicated to awakening us all. So anyway, the two stories or illustrations I thought of for today were reminding me of how... That's good. So there's a story about how one teacher shared a view about religion and how religions developed to help protect and preserve a spiritual light. But he cautioned that if we don't pay attention, if we aren't mindful, attentive to how we understand and appreciate the purpose of which the religion was established or organized in a way to so-called protect the light. And due to that non-attentiveness, that kind of mindless assumptions, taking things for granted, or even asserting our own individual beliefs, interpretations of what that light meant and represented, soot could begin to accumulate around the cylinder that was originally intended to preserve and protect that light. And so that's the caution about how as we're sheltering in place, we can understand and appreciate light. And the meaning of the Sangha, the community for which that light became the source of encouragement, faith, if you want to call it that, about how we live. And again, neglecting to appreciate the light for which the religion was organized can begin to accumulate a lot of blockages, a lot of things that could prevent the light from really shining, from really helping us to be able to see things more clearly. And so that was one thought about <clears throat> seeing that as far as I appreciate our religious tradition, we call Jodo Shinshu, is to realize the light doesn't need our protection, doesn't need us to preserve it, but it's more important for us to awaken to the light that despite how we may not be aware and appreciative of how that light is always shining, regardless of the external circumstances that we might find ourselves at any given moment. The light itself has not gone out. It is just my inability that I've not understood and appreciated how that light is working. And to see that is part of the working of the light. So that's the paradox. To see the blockages, to see the hindrances, 
to see the frustrations and fears is the light working. And that is where we begin to appreciate the light does not die because we don't see it, but it's to awaken to the thoughts, our own minds, our own assumptions and misbeliefs, if you want to call it that, that prevent us from appreciating the universal, immeasurable, timeless light that is always deep within, but is covered over by so many layers of assumptions, of uh, ideas that we attribute to how that light should be. Or even looking at religion or that spiritual light as something we use to make life go according to our wish. And in that sense, we come to see how we individually or collectively can be losing touch, turning our backs perhaps on seeing the light that may be behind us. But this is the reflection of realizing sheltering in place is to me feeling that light as the ultimate shelter that is constantly protecting and trying to transform our sense of fear, our sense of anxiety, and perhaps resentment about being in this situation, feeling so helpless and alone. But to me, loneliness is a state of mind, M-I-N-E. I'm caught in me, myself, and I feeling so sorry for being in this uncomfortable, uninvited, unappreciated situation. But the reality is what it is. But how we look at it is, I think, as how I appreciate hearing the Dharma as giving us a consciousness or an awareness to some degree of that light that brings to attention that which I cannot see with my own efforts, my own abilities. And that's the light that is, I feel, the shelter that we can appreciate as we physically take responsibility for how we impact, influence each other. And so staying physically in one place, in one designated area, is not to restrict us, but it is to inspire us to recognize how truly interdependent, interconnected we in fact are, are and have always been. It's just that the situation of presuming on that, that we have not always appreciated that fact. The other thought in story I thought I'd share is something that I've told in the past, where I was back on Maui and we, due to certain circumstances, had to move out of the parsonage for a time being because it was being rebuilt, renovated. So for that duration, uh, the, con the Sangha arranged to get a rental house in the neighborhood. So we're living in this house and then soon after moving in there, I started to notice the sound of chickens that would wake up to me in the middle of the night, start crowing. And then I started getting pretty annoyed with that, the sound of the chickens. And you know, so I'm thinking, okay, I'll try to be a little more mindful. I'll try to calm down. 
and not let it annoy me so much. But as I became more meditative, the sound of the chickens became louder. <laughs> anyway, so you know, I just dealt with the kind of eventually, I maybe, I don't know whether I got used to it or not, but anyway, that was the situation. So finally, when it came time to move back into the newly renovated uh, uh, parsonage, you know, I, one of the things that occurred to me while I was resting, you know, and thinking to myself, wow, now I don't have to hear those chickens in the morning. But I began to hear and notice the sounds of cats, feral cats that apparently, you know, when things are kind of still, began to uh, gather around that area. So then I'm laying there listening to the sound of the cat fights. And then, you know, it occurred to me, yes, I heard the sound of the chickens early in the morning that I didn't really appreciate. And now, I have to hear the sound of these cats fighting. But then it struck me at that moment, I don't know if it's endured, but at least I remember the story. I had this feeling of, yes, I could hear those cats and the chickens because I can hear. And I could see, I could smell, I could taste, and I could feel. And those are the natural parts of my biological existence that are functioning just as they are. As to whether how I hear things or taste things or feel about things, that's on me. That's my own blindness my own blockage of having created this ego shell that was intended to preserve and protect me. And then all of the soot of my assumptions, my expectations began to accumulate, which blocked and kind of basically in a way polluted, infected my senses so that I wasn't able to appreciate the world around me for all the things that it provides in making my life possible. And so that's the idea of, in thinking about Shinran's expression, its poem, that light of purity that is beyond compare. Because our usual calculating minds is always comparing I like this, I don't like that, I want this, I don't want that, beyond, without compare. When we encounter this light, all the bondages, the bounds of karma, my actions, my thoughts, go away. So Shinnan encouraged Take refuge in Amida, the heart, the spirit, a boundless light in life, the ultimate shelter. And this is how I hope we can continue to proceed with sheltering in place in this ultimate shelter of our heart, the heart mind of Namo Amida Butsu. So I join you in experiencing this spiritual retreat of sheltering in place, however long it may continue, but to see it again as an opportunity for what I think everything in the Buddhist tradition was intended to do is provide an opportunity for awakening in oneness. Oh, so <laughs> going back to sharing my acronym, I'll close again the idea being, let's take the lemon of COVID-19 
and begin to taste the lemonade of awareness and gratitude. So this is the uh, acronym. Live engaging mindfulness, openly natural activated Dharma energy. Live engaging mindfulness, openly natural activated Dharma net energy. Namo Amida Butsu. Take care. We'll see you again. Hopefully soon, but who knows? We're here now as we are. Arigato. So to conclude for today's Shortsky service, I'd like to acknowledge once again, Kevin Yoza, who's been helping produce these YouTube videos for us, and Keith Kojimoto, who's been my valued instructor, advisor in how to navigate this technical world. And to once again acknowledge Aina Tao, who has very diligently, you know, generously been sharing her time and her things that she picks up online is how people have been coping, coming to terms, use the time provided uh, through different online messages. Okay. So for announcements, I'd like to invite anybody viewing this to either through email or phone call messages to the church uh, requests for friendly calls for any kind of conversation. And all the members of our MAP team, Minister Assistance Program team Reverend Elaine Donlan, Reverend David Pading, Camille Pading, Leo Balambao, Leo Joslin, Keske Miyaki, have all been very open to supporting and sharing with anybody who would like to. Uh, and then, let's see. Oh yeah, this is a public service reminder. <laughs> you know, having this time, it's a great opportunity for us to participate in the 2020 census. So we can just go online to do that. So I invite you and encourage you to use the time productively 
by take, filling out the census survey, which is an important part for making governmental decisions. Okay, let's see what else do we have here. Oh, and then, as I mentioned last time, we're going to try to start an online book club. And I'm open to setting a date and time to have a weekly, well, I guess we'll, we'll try weekly and see how it goes, discussion on the book, Why Buddhism is True by Robert Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T. Okay, and some people I understand have already started reading it, so I'll just propose that starting, I'll just give a date, time, if it works, we'll continue. But if you have any other preferences, let you're welcome to uh, write in or call in. Okay, so I'm thinking of starting on Tuesday at 2 p.m. Thinking that's a easier to remember, Tuesday at 2. Okay, all right. And uh, let's see. I think that's all I have for today. And uh, let's see. Oh, so just maybe as another meditator, mindful exercise, you know, as we used to do at the uh, Cherry Blossom Festival when the BCSF had an information booth, uh, we would always ask whoever approached after they spun the Dharma wheel to think about and say what they are grateful for. So I think this would be a good opportunity to stop and reflect and continue to be mindful of all the things we can be grateful for. Okay, Sure, there are a lot of inconveniences and there's a lot of apprehension about where this whole uh, virus situation is going to go. But it is what it is. So to make the best of it, so to speak, make the lemonade out of the lemon, you know, those are things we can think about. All right, so with that, uh, thank you again for joining us for our virtual Sangha and spending the time to be together. As the sun shines upon the earth, awakening into growth seeds that lie dormant in the soil. May the light of wisdom shine into our hearts and minds to truly awaken us. And with this insight, stir, stir us to strive for a life of deeper understanding and enlightenment. Namo Amidabhs. Namo Amidabhs. Namo Amidabhs.